Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast, where each week, Pastor Jeff Cranston explores biblical theology that provides practical life applications in an understandable way. Thanks for joining us at the table. Let's get started. Hello again. Welcome back to Kitchen Table Theology. I'm your host, Tiffany Coker, and here with Pastor Jeff Cranston, we're on a quest to learn what the Bible teaches about doctrine and theology. These are topics that many Christians find challenging, confusing, and out of our reach, but we are aiming to do this in a way that applies to the lives we lead. We do this because we agree with what the Scottish reformer John Knox said, The scriptures of God are my only foundation and substance in all matters of weight and importance. We desire that the scriptures be that for all of us as well, because we want to help you to be strong in your faith doctrinally, knowledgeable in and of the word theologically, and grow in your love for Jesus exponentially. On today's podcast, we are continuing with the theology of worship. We're going to take it in a direction that many of us never think about bringing our worship to God to, our work. But before we do that, we want to thank you for leaving ratings and reviews. One review from Mrs. Crusoe reads, These bite-sized nuggets are just the right amount to chew on during my morning and evening walks. I love the focused topics to dwell and reflect on. I'm feeling more and more like a walking theologian. (laughs) That is so kind (laughs) of you to say, and we certainly are enjoying doing this. We are grateful for each rating and review because it really helps us get the word out to more and more people about Kitchen Table Theology. And hello again, everybody. So good of you to join us. We also want to quickly remind you about our podcast partner, Columbia Columbia International University in Columbia, South Carolina. They've got a wide variety of degree and certification programs from undergrad right on up through doctoral programs. And check them out today at ciu.edu. Well, let's get started. All right. Well, let me just begin with this. Have you ever been in a gym or an auditorium, some really large room that had lights that once you turned the switch on, they had to warm up and and gradually and slowly the lights finally come up to full strength. I don't know if Tiff, you've ever been in, does that in, ring any bells with you? Well, it sounds like it probably no, was a no. hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we have well, better lights uh, than that these days. <laughs> I can remember playing a high school game once in a gym. Some of the students as a prank shut the lights off, and we had to suspend play and stand around while we waited about five minutes for the lights to come back on, bright enough where we could see to play again. And, yeah, you know, that's very funny. And it was a while ago. It was, it was during the Jimmy Carter administration. I do know that. But uh, that that memory reminds me that flipping a switch doesn't always have immediate results. And in a similar, in a similar fashion, understanding God's command for us to use our skills and the way we do work for His glory does not immediately transform our outlook on work. You know, our, our work, our careers, our jobs may be written and preached about it as if living your faith at, in, through work is as easy as flipping a switch, but that's just so often not the case. That's so true. Sometimes we hear a biblical truth, whether that's in a sermon, at a conference, in a book, on the radio, we can grasp its importance, but living it out doesn't automatically happen right when we hear it. It's definitely not like flipping a switch. I mean, I wish it were that, you know, the Christian life would be a whole lot easier if you just, okay, I received some truth. All right, here we go. And a flip switch is, and now I very easily, you know, live it out. But it doesn't happen that way. And the truth is, work as worship is a mindset that, that's that's got to be implanted in us and that's got to be cultivated over time. I wonder how many of us have ever really engaged in our work as an act of worship to God. Most of us probably haven't even thought about that. I might even suggest that the majority of us really haven't spent a lot of time thinking about that. So, Today's topic may really be something new for many in our Kitchen Table Theology community. So what we'll really be talking about today is something we could call workship. Am I allowed to make up words? <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. Workship is good. I, I suppose we can certainly make that word up. So let me share with us briefly today some practical steps to make our work a place of worship. 
And I really think this is a new context for many of us. Sometimes it's just really hard to imagine how we can bring worship to work every day with us. Yeah, and I, I totally get that because for a number of years, I worked construction, and trust me, some of the men I worked with were pretty rough. I worked shoulder to shoulder with murderers, literally. One guy I worked with who's, I'll just call him Bill, he was the nicest guy in the world. And he we were building a prison, and he was staying in the old prison right next to us. And he would get out on work release. And one day I asked him why he was there. And he had, he had killed his wife. And so I got to work with him eight hours a day. I worked with a lot of addicts, guys who battled alcohol and drugs, people you'd think would be really difficult to be around. And, you know, sometimes they were, but I really loved those guys. I got along with them really well and, you know, grew up around that with, uh, your grandfather, you know, I worked for him. It was his company. Right. Uh, in Kitchen Table Theologian, perhaps you work with some pretty rough characters. And some look great on the outside, but on the inside, they get rough. Or maybe you're working with some people like I did in construction. And you're thinking inwardly, like, yeah, right. Like, I'm going to worship with these characters around. But I think you can. And let me share with you how to do that. I think we'd all love to know how to do that. And since I've been around for a while, been helping out on Kitchen Table Theology a few weeks now, and I know you pretty well, I think I know where you're headed (laughs) with this. You're going to give us some hooks to hang our worship at work on. So let's look at prayer, service, and excellence. Those are going to be our three hooks for today. Let's start with prayer. How do you bring that element of worship, an element we ended at last week's podcast talking about, but how do you bring prayer into work with you? Yeah, prayer, service, excellence. I think, you know, with most things for the believer, starting with prayer is always a good step. You know, that's always a good first step to take. And I'd like to suggest two verses that you can pray and and pray these verses with the idea of having those verses fleshed out in your life and bringing the truth of those verses into your work life. So, Tiff, how about reading those two verses? One is Ephesians 2.10, and the other is Romans 12.2. How about reading those for us? Sure. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Romans 12.2 reads, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So I think the first factor in cultivating a worship at work mindset is the daily petition for it, the daily prayer for it. Uh, We can ask God to help us develop a vision by which we see every task or project, even every meeting, as an opportunity to honor God. And we have a lot of meetings at Low Country Community Church where I pastor, and I'm not a meeting guy. Man, there's some days I just have to force myself, you know, to go sit in those meetings. But because uh, sometimes you feel like, well, we got a lot accomplished out of the meeting. And other times you're like, I'm not sure why we even met. And you probably have meetings like that where, where, where you work. But if you take the mindset in that I'm created for good works, that God can renew my mind, that I can see what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And I bring that to my work. It may be days, it may be months, but you'll begin to notice the shift in how you process your work. But if you habitually and earnestly pray about that every day, you know, let's just say you're driving to work every day, you're praying about work and praying that God will work out Ephesians 2 and Romans 12 in your your life, you're going to start to see a change come around. So I think prayer is an act of worship regarding work is a huge place to start. And that's not even mentioning praying for the people that you work with. So, yeah, I think prayer, we begin there, and that sets the tone for everything else. And like we talked about in the last two podcasts, just making prayer an everyday routine, just part of your day as you're going. So on your way to work, while you're at work, and throughout the day. So first, beginning with prayer, and then secondly, service. What do you mean by that? Well, I just think that we think in terms of serving those with whom we work. So discover ways you can serve the people you work with. Maybe it's 
maybe it is by praying for them, and I hope it will be. But, you know, think outside that box for a moment. Maybe some younger employees need some guidance or some mentorship. Investing in them and adding value to their lives and bringing biblical principles into their lives through your conversation or your actions, that that can be a means of worshiping at work. So, you know, start creating some space in your day or in your calendar to invest in the lives of other people. And as you do, you will start to see some opportunities pop up to share God's Word. And I think you'll find that once a work at worship, or sorry, a worship at work mindset begins germinating and rooting within you, you'll begin to notice many ways you can serve those people around you. So just showing the love of Christ by serving coworkers and customers it really is a very compelling means of honoring God with your work. And as you begin working out of this mindset, you'll begin to sense and see things you didn't sense and see before. You'll be able to speak into the lives of other people, help them out, even care for them. And as you do that, you'll fulfill the words of Jesus in John 13, when he said, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And so we can love other people by serving them. And when we serve other people, that can be an act of worship to God. That's so good. Just showing love, the love of Christ to people with us at work is a way for us to honor God and to worship him at work. All right. The last one is the word excellence, a sense of honoring God and pursuing excellence for our coworkers and our clients. So, you know, look at it like this, the people you work with and the people you work for deserve your best, right? And as we pray and serve, I believe that will lead to honoring God and pursuing excellence on the behalf of others. And that mentality will earn you the right to eventually speak truth into the lives of the people around you. It will earn you the right to share your faith with with greater opportunity and perhaps even with some greater conviction in your in your heart. Now, Tiff, I don't know if you ever go into retail stores. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. Funny. But you go into a fair number, as most people do, but I'm sure you've noticed the customer service in almost all these places is absolutely terrible. Just feel like they, they don't even bother to teach it anymore. I experienced terrible customer service just yesterday. I walked into a section of the store. I was obviously looking for something. I haven't been in one of these stores in years. I didn't know where I was happy I found the department, but then I couldn't find what I, what I was looking for. I was obviously looking for something. I wasn't finding it. A young sales girl just stood there and watched me. And finally, after about my fourth foray up and down these aisles, I finally asked her if she worked there. And I got a yes with attitude. And eventually, you know, she calls somebody else. And they, it was, you, you have to laugh to keep from crying, but... <laughs> This at, is why I rate, shop online. <laughs> yeah, shopping online goes off. Yeah, if I didn't need it that quickly, I would have gladly done that. Here's my point. If you work with excellence, you will stand out like a sore thumb nowadays. I mean, you will be a bright and shining beacon in, in, in a world that is customer service dark. And you know, working with excellence builds a reputation that points to Jesus You know, even in some of our written in-house documents in our staff here at Low Country, we we say that we want to do things with excellence. And excellence is not perfection, but but God deserves uh, the best that we can give him. And that carries, it has to carry over into our work. So when you look at your job, your work life, your career, if you do that for the glory of God, you're going to you're it's it's got to begin with cultivating a heart of worship in your work and recognizing that he alone you're you're working for him. Back when I was working construction and if I had a you know if it was a concrete day and you were going to spend all day troweling concrete, it gets really tiring, it hurts your back, it's boring. But I would often remind myself, okay, I'm going to I'm going to float this concrete absolute best I can for the glory of God. And that puts, it does put a new spin on it in your, in your own mind. So I think any career that you want to live for the glory of God, your work life. And that it, reminds, it begins when you, 
Oh, sorry. Go cultivate ahead. this heart of you begin by cultivating this heart of worship and uh, you do it for him. And then that filters down to doing it for others. And I think that really reminds me of what Paul wrote in Colossians. Whatever you do, work in it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. And I think this goes for, I've talked about this with my kids at school. It's, you know, if school is your job right now, if you're still in school, whether that's middle school, high school, college, taking classes, it's working for the Lord, not for men. And understanding that God has called us to worship him in our work is only a part of the process. We have to incorporate in this into our lives. And I think that requires some intentionality, don't you think? No, oh, absolutely it does. You know, there's there's got to be a daily commitment to prayer. There's got to be a servant mindset, along with bringing your best effort to the table, that excellence and faithfully serving those around you. And that will help you cultivate this workship mindset over time. It won't be overnight. So I would just challenge you, go ahead and flip the light switch. And it might take some time for the bulbs to heat up, but they will come on and they'll get brighter. So so worship at work beginning today, or if the day's over as you're listening to this, worship at work beginning tomorrow. It's It's wonderful theology lived out. Thank you so much again for listening to Kitchen Table Theology. Please take a moment, if you would, to rate and review this podcast, including on Spotify and on iTunes. This helps new listeners find the show and helps us to spread the Kitchen Table Theology love. Don't forget also to check out today's episode notes. And as always, thanks are due to our friends at Low Country Community Church here in Bluffton, South Carolina, for making this podcast possible. Don't forget, if you desire to go deeper... Or to begin or to further your education, check out our partner, Columbia International University. You can find out all you need to know about them at ciu.edu. Please head on over to jeffcranston.com for more information about Dr. Cranston, his books, sermons, leadership notes, and blog posts. And Lord willing, next week, we'll be back with another great episode. So there it is. Now go deeper. And until next time, always remember that the real power of theology is not only knowing it, but applying it. You've been listening to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast with Pastor Jeff Cranston. Join us next time for more insights into biblical truth. If you'd like to know more on today's topic, please check out our show notes. If you have a question from today's podcast, kindly email us at pastorjeff at lowcountrycc.org. If you're enjoying this podcast, would you consider leaving a rating and review? We deeply appreciate your help in getting the word out. And be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or in your favorite podcasting app to continue this journey with us as we learn about and apply God's word to our lives. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time here at Kitchen Table Theology.